I wonder, is my phone recharging? Okay. Okay, the bag, right? So uh, previously I was telling you that there is a specific bag in the game, right? Uh, when it comes to the nets, right? So here's a, here's what happens. Uh, let's look at the uh, the screen that is the, the screenshot that is on the far right, where the net is has been lifted, right? Here you come. The net has been lifted, and there are three fish waiting to be collected, right? The net lifted and the three fish waiting to be picked up, the bag in the game uh, will actually stop you from collecting that fish. So practically you tap on it and nothing happens. Right? So uh, this is not really true though. It's not really that nothing happens, it's, that it's, it's the only that the system doesn't really show you that something has happened. Right. So um, in which cases do you think a person would be unable to collect the fish? What's the most rational explanation? When the bag is full. When the bag is full. So uh, in cases like those, uh, the bag relates to the fact that the game will not really give you the warning that the barn is full. So not really. Yeah. Exactly because the barn is full, uh, the game will not come up with a warning message telling you that the barn is full, and practically it will show as though it hasn't reacted to your tapping. Right. But practically, it has. It, it is reacting, but it's just not giving you the warning that you you need to have more space in your barn to be able to collect that fish. Right. So uh, the moment you make enough space in your barn, you should be able to collect the fish. Right. So it's not that it's not responding. It's only that it's not giving you the warning. So that's that's one thing. That is a bag, and from what I know, it still has a very good. Right. Uh, or it's not important enough. For to be honest, I mean that uh, we have bigger fish to fry, pun intended. Um, so practically, yeah, uh, this is actually something that will happen. People did used to um, complain about it a lot, not so much anymore. Most of them already know why it's happening, so practically you don't get that anymore so much. Uh, but definitely that's something that is the case. Right. In this case, they use the fish, no. just cannot collect it until they have enough space. So you never lose anything. There's no way you can collect something and just lose it. Even if, the, if, and if you lose connection within the game, even if you lose your connection and the progress that uh, any changes that you've made haven't been uh, synced with the servers, the game will revert back to the phase that it was. So you never lose anything. So if, for example, you harvest your crops and uh, the connection has been lost, uh, you will return to the game to see that the crops are still there. Yeah, right. to me once. Hmm? It to me once. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite annoying. I was like, why are all my crops going away? True, but that's not really an issue with the game. It's more like uh, the game protecting your progress. Because for as long as progress has been lost, the game doesn't save any changes until you have connection again. Which kind of protects your progress. Right. So it's not really annoying you. It's more like protecting you. Um, so, any questions before we move on? I will also show you the fishing book before we actually continue with the demonstration. So, do we have any questions? Gives one uh, piece of 
All right. <laughs> right. Any other questions? Are we good? Excellent. So moving forward, then let's look into the fishing book for a second before we actually continue with uh, with the demonstration. So. The fishing book has a, has a brown cover. If you actually see the uh, the main cover of the fishing book on the top right, you will see that there is Angus, right? This is Angus. And to the left side of that picture, it's supposed to be the player's ankle, right? The player's ankle is uh, supposedly the person that has uh, pretty much uh, given as an, uh, what's the word, as an inheritance. Whatever, uh, the farm house to the player, right? So whenever you start the game, those of you that have started it should be familiar with it, um, or actually fresh in your mind. Uh, you see, you remember that uh, the farm is given to you by your uncle when you start the game, right? This is the same uncle that is supposed to be in the picture there, right? So uh, in any case, uh, when fishing with lures, every fish that the players catch uh, is photographed and weighed, right? So uh, if the fish they caught is from a new species, it is added in their uncle's fishing book, just like you see on the open book uh, at the bottom, right? So you get a photograph of the fish, and you also get to uh, see which lure was used to catch it, right? Or which lure is needed to catch it. And also uh, its weight when it comes to the category when you caught it, right? So uh, practically, uh, there are three categories when it comes to weights. Um, the first is a bronze, the second is a silver, the third is a gold. Obviously, the, the larger, the, the heavier the fish, the better the, uh, the category in which it falls and the better the reward. Right. Uh, the, uh, there is one diamond as, an, uh, as a reward for a small fish, the fish that fall into the bronze category. There are two diamonds uh, as a reward for the uh, silver category of weight. And then we have three diamonds for really be catching the fish in the gold category, right? So practically, when you catch one fish, if that is a brand new fish, you get reward because it was a brand new fish, and you also get to see um, to see in which category it falls when it comes to its weight. So you get the appropriate amount, right? The second time you catch the same fish, if it's from a different weight category, you still get diamond, and you get for the same fish, uh, you can possibly get three times rewarded for the same fish as long as it falls into different weight categories. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So each time a fish uh, can provide you with a reward because you fished it and it was brand new or in a new category, uh, it will actually flash in the fishing book. So it will bounce up and down until you actually collect it. So that's the way to know that there is a reward to be collected. All right. Um, so that's pretty much the fishing book. There's not much more than this. Just remember that uh, all fish will be categorized within uh, the fishing book and uh, you will be rewarded regarding the weight at which, the category, let's say, of uh, weight uh, in which they were caught. Um, you will be rewarded multiple times with uh, diamonds for uh, different categories of fish. And that's pretty much it. Right, so are we ready for the demonstration? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, right there, what you see is the boat I was talking about, right? So this is the boat you're supposed to get to get to uh, the fishing lake. I've already tapped on it, the system will load, very nice uh, resolution, and what we're going to get is this, in a very high resolution, <laughs> which is better now, but still not good enough. Um, oh my god, 240, seriously? Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, again, I'm not sure the network will allow us to <coughs> to use this for too long, but still, that looks a little bit better, right? Um, so, uh, as we said already, this is the uh, the what's it called the uh, the fisherman's house, right? The moment I tap on the fisherman's house. Uh, what's going to happen is that the system will open up the fishing book for me, right? There it is. So the fishing book obviously will come with one fish per page when you're playing this on a smartphone, right? There will be two fish per page if you play on a larger uh, device. 
So uh, practically, you will see uh, exactly what I was saying, the photograph of the fish, which lure was used to get it, and exactly which categories of that fish I have already caught. Right. So you will get to see different types. For example, there are situations where a fish hasn't been caught yet. So the system knows that if this fish exists, but I haven't caught it yet. Right. This is one example. So it actually shows me now a more like a, a blurry image of that fish. So I know it exists, but I haven't caught it yet. I don't even know its name. I, I can tell which lure I can use to get it, though. It looks like blue. Right? So one of them is a blue lure. And everything else will be revealed to me the moment I catch it. Right. The, all, the other thing I don't, I don't know is exactly which location, which spot I should be using to get it. That I don't know either. OK. So uh, practically, that's one thing. Uh, this is about the, uh, I don't have any, anyone flushing though. I have collected all rewards from that fish, and I haven't fished in a while, to be honest. Oh, no I do. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's keep going, and sooner than later we will get one. Yay! So this is, this is it, right? So practically I have this fish waiting to, the reward from this fish waiting to be collected. This is what I meant that when I said it would be jumping up and down. It's actually uh, trying to draw my attention and from the looks of things, this is related to the bronze category. So do you see how the bronze uh, fish <coughs> actually has a little sparkling, a sparkling effect, right? Yeah. That's the one I will be getting. So if I tap on it, in eight seconds you should see that I have gotten some diamonds from it. Three, two, one. <laughs> one. <laughs> so one diamond from uh, from the reward for this specific fish. Of course, it's no longer flashing because I don't have anything more to collect from it. Let me see. Is there anything else? There's nothing more. Right. So uh, this is the. Uh, okay. This will close very soon. Um, this is the. I will also show you the lure workbench. That is it. Uh, what I have done, I'm not sure how I actually ended up there, but what I have done is actually I have selected to uh, come to produce uh, a lot of lures, but now exactly because my tackle box doesn't fit anymore, uh, they have actually they are staying there until I actually collect them. Right. So practically, uh, right now, I think that if I try to produce more lure. It will tell me that I do not, oh, I do. OK, I actually do. Um, um, when I reach the, fresh, the, uh, the limit, let's say, of that lure workbench, which I think is around 10 or 20 uh, lures, I will not be able to actually make more until I start collecting from the ones that have already been produced. And that's actually the same for every building group, right? So um, at this moment, it hasn't shown me that because I had enough store in storage in my lure workbench to actually create more, right? But if it was full, I wouldn't be able to proceed. Uh, it would tell me that I don't have any more production slots available. Um, this is how the uh, the lobster pool looks when it's not fixed. Very soon you will see it. Boom. Uh, this is the uh, the lobster pool. Right, this one hasn't been fixed yet, and from the looks of things, I'm gonna need to wait until level 40, 44. I need to wait until level 44, that's another five levels for me before I can actually repair the lobster pool and actually start using it. That's the time that I will also be able to start catching yeah. lobster. Right, so until level 44, I will not be able to catch lobsters anyway, or produce lobster tails. Um, this is the lure workbench, the, um, the tackle box, right? As we said, you will see it very soon. As we said, the uh, tackle box will actually have a limited amount of uh, storage, right? And I can increase the storage, which will require me um, uh, expansion, not expansion, uh, upgrade items as well. Right, so in this case, it will ask me for nails, it will ask me for screws, and it will ask me for planks. No, wood panels. So I have nails, I, I, need, bolt, I need screws, and I also need wood panels to be able to upgrade my tackle box. I've never done it once, and I don't think I ever will. Right, so um, increase stores to 25. Currently, I have 20. That's how you start, really. Nice. Um, I'm not sure what I have. Are we done? Are we done? Over. Over and out. Nice.
I mean, we haven't we haven't streaming for the entire day. Oops, no. I think we're back. No, 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 it is, it is. It's good, it's good. Good. All right. Excellent. So that's also it. Now, I would like to show you the fishing spots, right? So uh, I actually, I will go through a tour through the fishing spots and uh, so that it actually updates soon. And then I will click on one of the fishing spots to see what it is. Right, so those are fishing spots, right? So each fishing spot is actually divided by those rope kind of things that actually come with buoys or whatever, right? Different spots, I have unlocked already some of them, but not all of them. When you tap on one of the fishing spots, the ones that haven't been unlocked yet, mm -hmm. uh, the system will tell you exactly how much expansion, how many expansion items are required before you can actually unlock the specific area. So from the looks of things, I'm gonna need 20 landings, 20 uh, mallets, and 20 marker stakes just to be able to unlock this fishing spot. To me, that's a lot, right? We're talking about 60 different items just to be, uh, just to be able to unlock one fishing area. That's crazy amount, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, but yet again, not all fishing spots require the exact same amount. For example, the one right beside it actually wants 26 different uh, of each one, right? So the one right next to it, let's see right now. The moon, work with me. <laughs> there you go, thank you. Um, this one will require 26 of each of those items just to be able to unlock this specific area. Right, so yes, it's costly, I agree. Yes, it's also um, something that you may want to do. I'm not going to do it yet. Uh, I don't remember the last, actually I do. It was on the last training of Heyday, which was about a month ago. I unlocked the last fishing spot. So uh, here is one of my nets, right? So uh, once this window closes, I have, uh, I have found one of my nets that I have deployed quite a while ago. Um, come on. So this is one of my uh, nets. When you tap on it, you are actually able to see that some fish has been caught. The moment I try to collect it, this is what happens. <laughs> Awfully happy to be caught. Yeah, because uh, disturbing. the best part is, is that the, the moment you collect them, they actually escape. Let's see that. Yeah, we're gonna die! Way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Escape. The fillet has been collected, seven uh, experience points have been uh, provided, but then that's all. <coughs> now there's no cooldown period there, simply because uh, I actually already took some time to, uh, to wait until the net catches my fish. Right, so it wouldn't make sense to have a cooldown period between nets as well. Now let's fish. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a blue lure to catch a fish. So I'll catch it for you and then we're gonna watch the replay. Come a little thing. Come on. Whoop, there we go. And yes. Right. So look at that. So I have just thrown the lure into the water, right? One fish has, has caught it. And then what happens is that it's struggling to get away, right? See how the circle, the outer circle has expanded because of the fish. The moment the outer circle reaches the smaller circle and the fish is in the smaller circle, a fish, yes, there you go. a fish has been caught. Right, so there's the seagull, which means now that there is a cooldown period in, uh, in, in when it comes to uh, how long I should wait before I can fish again. And if you tap on the seagull itself, the system will tell you exactly how long you should wait. Right. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna have to wait four hours before I can uh, fish again with nets or lures in this situation. Right, so um, that's pretty much how you, how you fish. Did that make it a little bit clearer than before? How you fish? Yeah, it's quite clear. And the fact yeah. with the, the outer circle shrinking in and right, actually going through the... It's uh, made like a mini game. That is a mini game. It, that yeah. is a mini game, but it's really easy. It's really easy. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't think there is a person that is Inadequate enough <laughs> to fish in the game, right? I mean, uh, yeah. In any case, um, it's actually counting down. Uh, the seagull is there. The moment you tap on the seagull, you actually see the cooldown period. Of course, you can pay gems, diamonds, to uh, expedite the uh, cooldown period, but that's pretty much it, right? 
Uh, let me see. Would like would anybody like to try the fish? Oh, come on, it's easy. it's easy. Okay, I have one open area. Who wants to fish? 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 Come on guys, you're not gonna be graded. It's it's fine. It's fine, come on, it's fine. It's fine, come on. Come on guys. Come on guys. I want a fisher. I need a fisher. Come on. <laughs> okay, fish one. So, All right, let's see. So, the first thing you should do is... This is a fishing spot? Uh, this is a fishing spot. So all you have to do is tap on it. Good. You need to select the lure and drag it into the sea, into the lake. So let's see. This is the red one, right? This is the red one, yes. Yeah, let's start with the easy let's one. Do that. No, you cannot let go. You need to uh, keep holding until uh, you catch a fish. There you go. So keep holding. Keep I got holding. a thick finger. <laughs> Actually, in the move it to the bottom. Move it, move it, move it down, move it down, move it down, move it down. Not too come much. On, come on, come there on, come on, come on. There you go. Leave it there, leave it there. Boom. Nope, you let go too. Ah, you the let go. It was green. It's fine, no worries. Oh, they fixed it. <laughs> they actually, they actually fixed it. Um, wait, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Okay, it actually escaped us because we let go just in the nick of time, but Ooh, it's fine. Green, we can, we can try fail. again. Yes, because we let go. But look, guys, they fixed it. They actually fixed it. The bag that I was talking about when it comes to the system not telling you that the barn is full, it has not been fixed. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's let's try it again. Now, right? So that means that I don't have enough st enough uh, space in my barn. Let's try this one more time. Where is it? What? Okay. There it is. So tap on it again. Good. Select the lure. Drag it in. Wait for the fish to catch it. There's a fish at your finger. You may want to move the lure a little bit. There you go. Oh, Not you can much. move the lure. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, keep it steady. Don't drag it too far down. Don't let go until you catch it. Go up, go up. And you let go. You need to first catch it before you let go. It was green. Try again. No, yeah, yeah, you need to actually first catch it before you let go. Fish is hating me. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Now you should look up. Excellent. Uh, no. Okay, now let's see. So, what Stefano did is actually uh, dropping the lure. The lure can be moved even before you actually catch the fish, right? So you can actually get it closer to a fish. The moment the fish has been caught, all you have to do is wait until the fish is close enough, and there you go. Right. It's pretty easy. It's really easy, right? So, all you have to do is actually know how to do it. Um, so, practically, uh, the fish has been caught. Another cool down period for me. Let's see, is there anything new? No, I don't think there's anything new here. Going through the thing very fast. Mm, okay. Nope. All right. So, we also have the duck salon, which is broken down. So, the duck salon is not going to be usable for me either. Uh, and this pre that pretty much concludes the demonstration for Fishing Lake. Are we clear? Are we okay? Yeah, yeah. Everything cool? We do have half an hour for the town. Are we ready? Yes? Half an hour Town. Right, let's go to the town. Let's go. So, the town. Now, previously we said that the town is a new area in Haiti, right? Now, just like the fishing lake, the town is also an extra area. Again, just like um, the night uh, village. Night village. So, uh, it will actually give you a new area to play in. It will provide you with coins, experience points, and reputation points. We did actually mention yesterday how reputation points are the uh, experience points equivalent for the town, right? So you get to uh, actually level up your town, and to be able to do this, you need to collect reputation points. All right, uh, the reputation points. Yeah. And I've lost connection to the network, nice. Oh. Nice. Of course. Uh, okay, so I'm going back to the town. So in any case, uh, this is a train station which is destroyed, so to speak, uh, up until level 34. Uh, from 34 onwards, uh, level 34 onwards, you are able to repair, 
this specific train station. And for as long as it's repaired, you should then be able to take it and go to the town. We will be, uh, I will be showing you that, of course, very soon. So um, to be able to repair the, uh, the train station, you're going to have to use 39,000 points. And it, will, and it will take three days to be completed, or 97 diamonds to do this instantly. Uh, you will be given 39 experience points. That's beyond the point. After taking the hunt car to go to the town place, must repair the town's uh, train station and town hall. Both, thankfully, are for free. I will show you that as well. So when we do the demonstration, I will show you which one is the um, uh, train station of the town, which is actually in the photo as well, and also which one is the town hall. Mm. Right. So uh, from level 34 onwards, players, or players can use the layout edit mode to edit the current layout of the town and to create new ones. There are several buildings in the farm, just like the ones we're going to see now. So, uh, the first one is the express train. Now, the express train is the train that will bring visitors to your town. The main reason that you would like to play the town is to be able to service your visitors. Right? So, in the town, what you do is get visitors. And to be able to service your visitors, you're going to have to have some service buildings. There are some service buildings. Uh, there are seven service buildings at this moment uh, available in the town. Uh, each one of them is uh, different in looks and so on and provides different, let's say, uh, facilities. Sort of. Right. So the, your main goal in, this, uh, in the town is to be able to service your visitors so that you can collect reputation points and then advance uh, through the town as well. Right. So the express train will bring you the visitors that are required to be able to advance uh, in reputation. Uh, then again, we have the train station. This is the town's train station, uh, which you can repair the moment you enter the town. It's for free. Uh, we have the town hall, which is on the top right. The town hall is also available from the beginning of the, of the town. Uh, it's there for you to repair. Again, it's for free. Then we have the service buildings. Those are just an example of service buildings, uh, number four. Number five is a personal train. The personal train is a train that will take uh, visitors from other uh, farms that are actually in your neighborhood. So you can visit your neighborhoods, um, your neighbors' uh, towns, and you can actually take visitors from them. Right. So practically what happens is this. Do you see just below the express train how there are four people waiting at the station? Yeah. Can, can you actually recognize those four people there standing? Right. There are four people just directly below the uh, the express train, right? I'm talking about those th those people. Those are people, right? Those are visitors, right? So when they wait there, that means that they're waiting for the next train to come pick them up. If another neighbor of mine, one of my neighbors, uh, actually sends their personal train to my town, they should be able to collect those four people and take them to their town to be serviced. Right, so for as long as there are visitors waiting on the train station, they can be collected by a person's personal train and uh, taken to their own town. So they can, they can be served. Right, so I'm making sense here. Yeah? Am I? I will show you that, of course. Uh, so that what we're discussing here, of course, will be demonstrated to you, so don't worry too much about that. So uh, are we okay with that? Good. Now, uh, we, uh, this is the personal train. Number six is the hand car which pretty much takes you back to the farm, right? So just like uh, the boat in the fishing lake, the hunter will take you back into the, uh, into, onto the farm. And here are the list of buildings in town. The first one is the town hall, where you can actually keep track of your town visitors. You can actually see which visitors are idle, which visitors require attention, which visitors are ready, which visitors are uh, anything really, right? So this is the town hall at the very bottom uh, very bottom left. Right, this is how the town hall looks in one of its versions. Then we have the farm station and the train station. The farm station is obviously at, uh, within the farm. The town train station is at the, uh, the town. Uh, the actually is, this is where you actually get to, um, the first is so that you can move from the farm onto the town. The other one is to bring you uh, visitors, right? We have service buildings uh, where players can serve visitors. There are seven buildings in total. The first is a grocery, this one. The second one is a cinema. The other one is a diner. We have the bed and breakfasts. We have spas. We have gift shops. 
and we have the beach cafe, right? Those are the service buildings available in the town right now. Possibly uh, sometime in the future there may be more, right? <laughs> uh, we also have the express train, right? The express train is the one that brings you visitors automatically. So every day you get a new batch of visitors coming in. But there's a limit to how many visitors your town can hold, and that relates to your uh, level of the town hall and also your reputation level, right? So it depends. Uh, the express train will give you an, an amount enough to actually uh, have, a, let's say, a full town, more or less, right? Uh, according to the limits of your town, of course. Uh, and then we have the personal train, which we already said. Um, that uh, the personal train will collect uh, visitors from uh, se several different other neighborhoods. Now, previously, before the December 2017 uh, update, it was possible to only collect visitors from one neighbor at a time. With the December 2017 update, you could actually collect visitors from multiple neighborhoods and bring them in one go <coughs> to your to your own town. Right. So that was actually a new addition, so to speak, uh, brought to the personal train. I was here up to now when it comes to uh, the locations or very uh, the facilities of the town. Are we okay with that? Good. Again, I will show you all of that in the demonstration, so don't feel um, overwhelmed because all of that will be cleared up the moment we see them uh, alive. All right. All of that will be seen. Now, besides the town, actually a part of the town is also the sanctuary. The sanctuary is actually a part where you get to see wild animals. So I did tell you before that we have farm animals, we have um, uh, pets, we have non-playable animals and so on and so forth, decorative animals, but we also have the sanctuary animals, practically wild animals. We're talking about hippos, we're talking about um, uh, giraffes and elephants. Right, so uh, the sanctuary is a feature of the game, part of the town, uh, which practically allows you to uh, collect experience points by feeding them. It's like the pets. So practically the wild animals and the pets are pretty much the same thing. You just feed them and they provide you with experience points in time. Right, just like the pets. In reality that's the thing. Um, it is unlocked at reputation level 3 and it's located on the far right of the town. I will show you that of course. Right. To be able to access the sanctuary you need to repair the book stand which is on the top left of the picture. Do you see uh, the book stand on the top left? Yes. That's actually the one you need to repair to be able to act as a sanctuary. But to be able to get to the book stand, you're gonna need to open, you're gonna need to open the, uh, the plot of land that connects the town with the sanctuary. So we said already that we have expansions in the game, right? So we know that we can expand the areas we're in by providing, by uh, paying the expansion items, uh, the amount necessary, and so on, right? So imagine how the town has a specific area uh, already uh, provided to you. There are some parts of this area that are uh, closed off, and you need to actually use expansion items to open it up. And then right next to that is a sanctuary. Right. So if you open up one of the uh, one of the expansion slots that hasn't been unlocked yet, that is between the town and the sanctuary, that connects the two, and then you're able to unlock the sanctuary. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. So for as long as the sanctuary and the town are connected, you're able to repair the book stand, and that's when you will be able to get access to the sanctuary. Now the good news is, is that the moment you complete the uh, the um, repairing of the book stand, you get one animal for free. One of each? One. Huh? one, just, just, one. one? just one random animal. Uh, in the beginning, there were just six animals, right? So there were two versions of an elephant, two versions of a giraffe, two versions of a hippo. Right, and the only difference was the color, really. Huh. We will see the, uh, the animals very soon. Uh, each one of those animals has its own feed uh, pole, so to speak, right? So do you see how there is a giant, uh, uh, tall, little feeding area on uh, the middle, bottom middle? That is actually where the giraffes feed from, right? So uh, when you unlock the book stand, you get one random free wild animal. The thing is, is that to be able to unlock animals, this is where your question comes in, Nikki, uh, you need puzzle pieces. Puzzle pieces. To be able to unlock animals, you need puzzle pieces. Those puzzle pieces, uh, when collected, will offer you, when all of the puzzle pieces are of one specific animal have been, have been collected, you get to unlock this animal in the sanctuary. Right. 
Now, what happens is that when you unlock the, uh, the, uh, the book stand, you get all the puzzle pieces of one animal for free. So one animal is completed for you, and you get all the puzzle pieces instantly. Right. Every, every other animal to be unlocked within the sanctuary, you're going to need to collect the pieces for it. Right. The good news is, is that the game will never give you the same uh, piece, puzzle piece twice. So you will always get a new puzzle piece. <coughs> Which one you get, that's random. But uh, it, thankfully, it will never give you the same one twice. All right. Um, of course, I will show you that in the demonstration to see exactly how it looks. So in general terms, uh, just like any other part of the game, those trees and bushes can be removed, and rocks can be removed with the right tools, right? So that you can actually make more room for the animals, right? Um, what else? Okay, that's fine. And those are the animals I was talking about, right? <laughs> we have the brown elephant, we have the gray elephant, we have the beige giraffe, we have the yellow giraffe, we have the gray hippo, and the brown hippo. What's wrong with the brown hippo? Right? So, uh, <laughs> so practically, we have, uh, we have those uh, six animals. That's how it all started, so to speak, right? But the point is, is that from the moment you actually have uh, both of each kind, you get to unlock those. Look at those weeds. Those baby animals were actually oh. added with the December 2017 update. Right? So this is a brand new addition to the town sanctuary. And those are the baby animals, right? So from the moment you have uh, both the brown uh, elephant and the gray elephant, you can unlock the, uh, the baby elephants and the same for all other animals. Right. So practically, that's a new addition starting December. Right. It's the, same, um, it's, it's the exact same, let's say, color variations, but only with baby. That's pretty much it. Or a baby in the middle. I wonder when aliens would be Good one. Uh, Why not? Right. So uh, that's pretty much all about the sanctuary. Now I would like to take the next 15 minutes to demonstrate it live. Yeah? Yep. Let's do that. Yes, please. Let's do that. Oh, really? All right. Let's go to the town, dudes. Right, so right now I'm in the town. Right, so once I've clicked on the uh, farm station, the system will take me straight into the town. This is actually what the town looks like. This is the town station, as you can see. Uh, right to, to the bottom right is the personal train, and right now the express train has arrived to bring me visitors. Right, so this is the express train having arrived. Some visitors have also. Um, they are walking on rails for some reason. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, uh, I wonder if there is any ticket like, do these people want to commit suicide? No, thankfully <laughs> they're not. Actually, I've seen uh, the track going over the dog, so yeah, it's not. It's oh. not nice. uh, I've, I've seen that happening, so yeah. It's not nice. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, from the game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's no. Uh, they, they don't stop it from happening. Uh, any case. What I was telling you earlier is that we have a town hall, right? So the town hall is something that will appear very soon to you. Um, come on. Thank you. Uh, the town hall is on my top right, right? So there it is. I actually tapped on it right now. And what happens is that the system will tell you exactly what you should expect when it comes to managing your visitors, right? So all the visitors that are available in my town right now have some kind of status. Some of them are idle. Some of them are waiting. Some of them are ready. Right? So uh, let's remember that the town visitors are actually waiting to be serviced. Right? So they expect to uh, be serviced by a specific building in your town to, uh, to actually get the reward points and, re and experience points, reputation points, coins, and so on and so forth. Now previously, the first tab, the first tab says all. That wasn't there before. The all tab was added December 2017. Right, so that's a new addition as well. Yeah, it was. It was mm -hmm. Right? So uh, there's also another tab that says idle. Those are all the visitors that practically are uh, pretty much going around my town right now, doing nothing really, waiting for the service, right? So those are the idle um, um, visitors. We have those ones that are waiting, waiting to be serviced in a building. 
So when a person wants to go, for example, to the cinema, you can actually send them to the cinema as long as you have enough slots. I will show you what I mean. Uh, and uh, until they're serviced, until you actually give them what they're looking for, they're waiting. Right, so they're not really idle, they're not in the town, they're waiting in the service building that you send them to, but they haven't been serviced yet. So they're just waiting. Right. Then we have the ones that are being served. At this moment, I have no visitors being served, which means that uh, all of my visitors are either waiting or are being idle or are ready. There's also that possibility. There are no ready visitors. Yay. And there are also, there's also a list for the living ones, the ones that are actually waiting to leave uh, because they're waiting for the train, really, right? So it's either the express train that would take them or a personal train from one of my visitors, my, one of my neighbors, right? So we have all, we have idle, we have waiting, we have served, serving, we have ready, and we have station, living, and we have living, right? So different tabs to actually show the status of town visitors, right? So six statuses pretty much for visitors. For, oh, no, actually five. All was an addition with December 2017. Right. So um, of course you, uh, you get to upgrade how many visitors your town can hold. At this moment with my current version of level of the town hall, I can hold 18 visitors. Yes, I can hold 18 visitors, and all of my and right now my town is full. I have 18 visitors waiting to be serviced, or idle in general. Right, so uh, I can upgrade how much capacity my town can have by uh, using uh, the appropriate tools. Uh, if I used, if I had enough tools, I could actually um, uh, get another three uh, town <coughs> visitors added to my total capacity, which will bring me to 21. Right, so that's how you upgrade the town hall. Upgrading the town hall also relates to having the appropriate reputation level. So if you don't have the appropriate reputation level, you wouldn't be able to upgrade further. Right. So um, in some cases, you may not be able to upgrade unless you have the right reputation level. Now let's look at some of those um, um, uh, service buildings. So uh, what I did is actually close it down, and then I went straight to the grocery store. Let's wait until it closes. This is one of the service buildings, and that is the grocery store. This is one of the first service buildings you will get, right? Uh, the grocery store will actually give you um, uh, slots in which uh, your town visitors will go in. Actually, you start with two, but you can upgrade your buildings to hold more. Right. So uh, you do see the slots that say empty, correct? Can you all see it? Uh huh. Uh, as it happens, there is a little um, circle that actually has an arrow pointing upwards. Can you all see it? It's actually, uh, it says empty, 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 and then there is a circle with an arrow pointing up, correct? Yes. Good. That's the button that if you click on, uh, it will tell you, uh, thing, it will actually give you options to upgrade this building. Do you see it? I will show you that again. Um, so practically, when you click on the arrow pointing up, you get the option to upgrade uh, the capacity, the slots, let's say, necessary uh, to service people. That's the first option. You get the option to upgrade how, much, how many coins you actually uh, win uh, from its served uh, visitor, right? That's the second option. You get the option to win more reputation and more experience points by upgrading the third option. And you also get uh, to uh, boost the, uh, or better yet lower, the amount of time required for each visitor to be serviced, right? So that's the fourth option, right? Each one of them requires a specific amount of expansion or upgrade uh, tools. And the moment you have enough, you can upgrade your building. And of course, uh, it may take a while, but still, that's something you can definitely do, right? Right now, my grocery store, for example, is on level five. But it's on level five only because I have five different slots for, uh, for visitors. Right, so going back to this, let me find a town visitor that actually wants to go somewhere. Okay, I have a visitor that wants to go to bed and breakfast. I'm gonna send him right there. Right, so uh, this hillbilly kind of guy uh, actually wants to go to the bed and breakfast, right? So uh, what I did is actually select bed and breakfast and I asked him to go there and now, it's actually in the bed and breakfast, right? The moment I tap on the bed and breakfast, the system will actually show me all visitors waiting to be serviced in that specific building. I tapped on it, let's wait. There's a bell on top, do you see? The bell tells you that there's something that is in, uh, that needs your attention, right? 
So right now, I have four available slots in my bed and breakfast. All of my visitors expect something from me. Right, so maybe there is a way I can service at least one of them. Let me see. Yep, I can service this guy. So, practically, uh, the moment I tap on one of those slots, they, uh, the system will tell me exactly what this person is looking for, right? So uh, this guy is looking for a cookie and for bacon. What I can do is actually drag those items from uh, the list where they appear onto them, and then instantly the, uh, the timer begins for that serving. Right, so right now this person will take eight hours before they're completely satisfied with the serving. So after eight hours, they will uh, award me with coins, reputation points, and experience points. After the eight hours, right? So I have just served them. So this person actually only, uh, after eight hours, after the countdown is done, uh, they will reward me for my serving, right? Now, each visitor will ask you to be served by at least two buildings. So uh, it's not like they're gonna come ask uh, to go to the cinema and then leave. In, uh, in many cases, they will ask to go to the cinema and then to the grocery store and then will leave. The cases uh, and on higher reputation levels that uh, visitors will ask you for three buildings. So they will ask you to go to the cinema, to the grocery store, and the spa before before they can actually leave. Right? There you go. So uh, the fact remains is that um, there are tasks available when it comes to the uh, debit tasks, when it comes to service uh, servicing um, uh, visitors in your town. Uh, in some cases, a task may ask you to uh, serve a specific type of visitor, for example, the teacher. Serve the teacher 15 times, let's say. But that means completely serve. Let's not forget that uh, visitors will ask you to be served by multiple buildings before they're satisfied, right? So uh, that means completely served, not just once, right? Um, and there are the cases where it tells you, um, let's say, um, serve 15 uh, town visitors, fully served. 15 town visitors without really specifying which type of visitor. That can be another debit task. And we did already say that uh, with the December 2017 update, boosters also give you uh, some extra benefits for the town and how you service your visitors. We have uh, boosters for the town as well now. Right, previously they didn't exist. December 2017 brought boosters for uh, the town and the fishing lake. All right. Uh, now, let me show you the sanctuary. We have five minutes. So look at that. Uh, I have actually, um, I have focused the game on, uh, okay, go, 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 there. Good. So look at that. Do you see the plot of land <coughs> that it actually makes a corner on the top right? And do you see the plot of land that makes a corner of the bottom left? Right? Yeah. In between, there is an open land. This is the land that I had to unlock to be able to connect my town with my sanctuary. So practically, what I'm trying to say is that the area in between those two plots was also locked. I had to unlock it by expanding my territory to be able to connect the town with my sanctuary. The moment I was able to do this, I was also able to uh, get to the book stand to repair it so that I can actually start using my sanctuary. Right, so what I did is actually move to the uh, book stand. You will see that very soon. There you go, that's the book stand. The moment you tap on it, the system will actually tell you how many parts of places you have collected as, as of yet, right? Um, so every, at this moment, uh, for the gray hippo, I have 16 out of the 36 puzzle pieces required to unlock it. Right, this is a work in progress. As it happens, it's not really a fast process. Not for me at least, right? Um, so the moment I collect the other 20 pieces related to the gray hippo, I will unlock this specific um, uh, animal in my sanctuary. Right, the moment I unlock the second hippo as well, a work in progress for next year, um, I will also be able to unlock the baby hippos as well. Right, so the moment you unlock a, a sanctuary, what we did say is that you will be given an animal for free. Now I have a giraffe right here, which is actually sleeping, and I can even feed it to get points. So, look at that. This is my giraffe sleeping in a bowl. You see that? And this is the pole that I can actually put the feed in. I just put hay on the pole. I just woke it up. It gave me 25 experience points, and at some point it will also eat and so on and so forth. 
Right. So that's pretty much it. It's like a pet. The giraffe is like a pet, really. Right. So um, that's pretty we, much I it. I could just wish for a pet giraffe. Yeah. Actually, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually even go to pet one at the at the zoo. It was fun. Uh, You're in Greece. You're in Greece, or yeah, in, uh, in the Attica Zoo. Yeah. So, guys, um, that pretty much concludes our demonstration, right? So, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask them after the break. Uh, Kenneth and Roy will go back to production, right? Uh, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You may want to take your thoughts with you, or you may leave them here and there. Um, uh, good uh, yes. Uh, just you go to production. The rest take a break. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when you return, we will uh, work with Sundays as well. So good. Good luck, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Γιατί τώρα ας πούμε μου είπαν τέτοια πράγματα και τα πήρα από την Νίκη. Νίκη. Όπω ε, δεν είχα ε, κοτοτροφή. Κοτοτροφή. Αντρέα, τι ώρα γυρνάμε. 3.15. Τι Στο μέλι μου στο Ζήτρα το είχαμε γίνει τε... σε ένα γεπάσχο και τα έχει μου λέει. Ζήτρα. Στο Ζήτρα έχει το CCMS πάσχο. Με το CCMS. Κάπου μου λέει να, να αλλάξει το mail μου. Τι. Καθες να κάνεις έλεγμα και το θέμα Ωραία, ναι, όταν έγινε, μην χάσεις το διαθυμάσεις τώρα γι' αυτό. Γίνε και το βλέπουμε. Τι έγινε. 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 Τι έ
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 